Hello, how are you doing? And welcome back to the channel. The Champions Cup returns this weekend. It's the last 16, then followed next weekend by the quarterfinals as well. So in this video, I'm going to be previewing the fixtures this weekend. Hopefully the competition can finally kick into life after what was a pretty bloated and just a bit of a mess of a pool stage in terms of the two conferences that they run. I will be getting into that at the start of the video, but I'll be going through each game, talking who I think the winners are going to be. Drop a comment down below and let me know what you think the results of these games Games will be. Let me know what you think of the Champions Cup more generally. It used to be the jewel in the crown of domestic rugby in Europe. Um, and at the moment, I just think it's a bit of a mess. But I'll get into that. Do drop a comment down below. If you can like the video and subscribe to the channel, then for me, that's an added bonus. But all right, let's get into it. So here's just a reminder of kind of how we got to this stage, I suppose. I do feel at the moment that the structure of rugby union particularly the domestic game, but it bleeds into when the internationals are as well. It's just a complete and utter mess in terms of, I obviously watch a lot of the Premiership and how it gets broken up for, you know, Champions Cup and Challenge Cup and you lose momentum in the various domestic divisions. I don't necessarily know what the answer is. I think ultimately we actually need less rugby, but then there's going to be less money to go around, less games for the clubs, etc., etc. But this is how we got to this stage. This is just Pool A. I'll whack it up on screen now. Uh, from the pool stages, so obviously Leinster comfortably at the top of that pool, Exeter and the Sharks, Saracens, Edinburgh, all having pretty good group stages. But then the nature of the competition, because eight teams out of 12 go through from the group stages, you've got teams like Gloucester, the Bulls, Quinns, who've won two, they've lost two. It actually gets worse in Pool B in a second. Teams who probably aren't really necessarily playing that well at the moment, who still get themselves into a last 16. So I do wonder, because of that, whether actually it won't necessarily be this weekend that the Champions Cup is really, really good, although I think we'll have some good games. It might be once we get to the quarterfinals and we're actually starting to cut through to the very best teams across, I keep meaning to say Europe, but across the, the competitions, obviously, with the South African teams as well. I also still think it's an issue, just to reiterate, that ninth and 10th drop into the Challenge Cup as well. I don't really think that should happen, but it is what it is. So that's Pool A, really, in terms of those eight teams you can see there who have qualified. And on to Pool B, uh, La Rochelle and Toulouse winning all four of their games. You've got the Stormers, who I think are in there and have a great chance of potentially winning this competition. Actually, I would really like one of the South African teams potentially to get to the final. I think I just want to see the interest in it kind of grow in South Africa. It's not being helped at the moment by the structure of the competition, um, but it is what it is. Leicester Tigers, who actually uh, are in great form at the moment in the Gallagher Premiership. They've also been pretty good this year in the Champions Cup. Ospreys, who are absolutely brilliant in getting themselves into that fifth spot position. They had some really big scalps in the group stage. Um, but then you do look down, you look at Montpellier, you look at Ulster. Uh, Ulster, though, are a good side, but when you only win one game in the pool stage and you're still able to go through to the last 16, I think it makes a little bit of a mockery of just where the competition is at the moment. But that's kind of by the by. That's where the pool stages were. And these are the fixtures we have for this coming weekend. Starting on Friday night, it's Leicester against Edinburgh. I'll circle back to all of them, by the way, and give a brief synopsis in just a moment. Uh, you've then got the Sharks against Munster, Stormers, Harlequins, Leinster, Ulster, and La Rochelle, Gloucester. Those are all the games on the Saturday. And then on to Sunday, the matches are Exeter Chiefs against Montpellier, to lose the Bulls, and Saracens against the Ospreys. So heading back to the Friday night, Leicester against Edinburgh. Interesting game this. Edinburgh aren't on great form, are they? I know domestically they haven't had um, the best of results recently. Steve Diamond has come in. They've had change in coaching, but they have had some pretty big scalps in the Champions Cup. They beat Saracens in the pool stages. Leicester, likewise, I think, have got more impressive in the Gallagher Premiership after having a bit of a rocky patch, kind of the start of the season. Borthwick then leaving to join England, and they kind of took a while to find their feet, but they're on form again. So Friday night could be quite an interesting one. With Leicester being at home, Welford Road, once again, is a tough place to go and get a result. I'll probably think Leicester can get the job done there, but we'll wait and see. Into Saturday, where it is the one good thing about the Champions Cup is the kind of back-to-back-to-back, -back -back, just all the games on TV, one after the other. You can just sit down in front of the TV and watch them. Starting off with the Sharks against Munster. Uh, Sharks pack full of Springboks against Munster, who, in terms of the URC this year, they're doing all right, aren't they? They're fifth at the moment. They're a little way off kind of those top teams, uh, if you want to look at the points in the table. I just think the Sharks will probably have a bit too much in that game, I would suspect. But 
Who knows? Then you've got Stormers against Harlequins. I think that'll be pretty one-sided. The Stormers are second in the URC. They've looked good all year. Harlequins have massively dropped off in the Gallagher Premiership. They don't look like they're going to get top four. They're also, well, it's another trip to South Africa for Quinns, who actually had a trip. Was it the Sharks they played? I'm trying to remember. I think Quinns played the Sharks in the pool stages and might feel they should have come away with more from that game. Maybe the conditions will suit their playing style, but I think the Stormers, I'd imagine, will have too much there. You then got Leinster and Ulster. Again, two sides right towards the top of the URC. Leinster obviously first and Ulster third. Ulster, as I mentioned before, didn't have the best pool stage. In fact, they only qualified because they beat Sale on the, in the final round of, of group fixtures. Um, they had lost all three up to that point. I think at home, Leinster are just gonna be too good. In fact, I think really, going back to those pool stages, I think Leinster, La Rochelle and Toulouse as the three sides that won all four of their pool stages, for me, are the best sides in the competition. I think the winner will come from one of those three teams. And as I say, I think the Stormers could potentially cause an upset. But I think Leinster will beat Ulster. And then La Rochelle against Gloucester. I think that is a kind of game Gloucester just do not want at the moment. Going away from home to France to play La Rochelle, the defending champions, a team who are second in the top 14 this season behind Toulouse. Clearly an excellent outfit. I just don't really see Gloucester getting a result there at all. Their form has tailed off massively. They'd be pretty disappointed, really, Gloucester, I think, in the way the season is starting to tail off for them. They don't look like they're going to get top four in the Premiership. Doesn't look like they'll be in the playoffs. I would imagine, barring a big shot, that they'll be beaten pretty comprehensively against La Rochelle. On to Sunday then, Exeter Chiefs against Montpellier. This is an interesting game because Exeter are another side. I mean, they lost to Bath, who were bottom of the table in the Premiership at the weekend. They have been way off their best in terms of what we've used to see of them being in the Premiership final every single year. They haven't been anywhere near as good. But Montpellier are a funny team as well. They're ninth in the top 14. They every so often have the potential to have a brilliant result and then every so often have the potential to have a pretty terrible result. So I actually think that game could honestly go either way. Exeter at home, so maybe you'd give them the edge there. But I think Montpellier could get the result. Maybe I'll go for Montpellier there just because I think Chiefs are losing so many players at the end of the season, not really playing well. And I think Montpellier have the potential to cause a bit of an upset there. So I'm going to go for the French team. Then it's Toulouse against the Bulls. This could be a great game. As I say, Toulouse are first in the top 14, the Bulls seventh in the URC, are probably edge towards Toulouse. They're just packed full of quality, aren't they? The fact that they're at home. I do think home advantage, it always has been in Europe. Well, Europe, I say Europe again. It always has been in this competition. Home advantage for the knockout stages is absolutely key, which is partly why I'm going for the home side in a lot of these picks. But I think maybe for Toulouse there, they'll just have too much. Then the final game of the weekend, Saracens against the Ospreys. I actually feel sorry for the Ospreys because they did so well to qualify. And I don't mean to sound patronising there, but they had some great results. They had the result against Leicester at Welford Road. Um... They weren't really expected to do anything and they've kind of been bearing the flag for the Welsh teams and we know how much Welsh rugby is struggling at the moment. So I'd have liked to see Ospreys if they could have potentially got just a little bit of a kinder draw. I mean, Saracens have been beaten at home in the Champions Cup this season, but I think they'll probably have too much for the Ospreys. I do think actually that is a game which has the potential to be an upset more than a lot of the other ones. But I think I'd probably just give the edge to Saracens there. Um, and I've, is that the only pick I've got? Oh, I said Leicester might get through as well. So I think, yeah, I think it's likely that Saracens get through. There'll probably be only two English teams in the last eight. Because I think the English teams aren't as good at the moment. I think it is the French teams, it's the South African teams that are the more dangerous as well as with Leinster as well, of course. That's how I see it going this weekend. What do you make of the Champions Cup? What do you make of the competition as a whole. I think it's been a complete mess, really. I don't necessarily know what the what the solution is, um, but I hope there is one fairly soon because it's a competition that once was the best competition out there and now eh, I'm just not sure it's quite living up to that. So let me know your comments down below. Let me know your predictions for this weekend. How many sides do you see getting through? Do you think that it is Leinster, Toulouse, La Rochelle, maybe the Stormers are the four most likely to potentially win it? You can let me know in the comments down below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.